Mikey Smith is somewhat of a legend on this channel. He is so determined to find the truth of his world that he's gone to such lengths as do things like film stars through binoculars. Just for reference again, here is Mikey's picture of Sirius. And here is his picture of Capella. Out of focus, recorded with a camera phone through a binocular eyepiece. Trying to shine a laser pointer on the moon around or beside the moon so let's get together and spread this video that it is not 240,000 miles away and even taking the sun's temperature with a thermometer at uh, almost 200 degrees so we got 124 so it won't surprise you to learn that he thinks our heliocentric model doesn't work. And when I say our model, I of course mean reality. And when I say does not work, I of course mean works perfectly. But Mikey's not gonna let details like that hold him back. Hello all and welcome along to another episode of Flat Earth Friday with me, Simon Dan. Thank you very much for joining me. Before we begin today, some of you regular subscribers might not know that I now release a video on a Saturday. I've called them the Saturday sessions and they could literally be about anything. Not necessarily flat earth, not necessarily about science. I'll leave a playlist for it in the description. Go check it out if you haven't seen already. There are a few interesting videos on there already. Please do check it out, thank you. Right, on with today's video and the incredulous Mikey Smith. Now he's got a model of the sun, moon and earth which he says doesn't work. Once you see his model, you'll understand why. But we're gonna hear him out all the same. Come on then Mikey, off you go. Okay, here we go Globies. Any one of you fantastically smart, intelligent, absolutely amazing globies out there please explain to me i don't care what degree of angle it is you want to know why because it's above my head the moon is above your head and what does that prove exactly mikey because that's what happens in both our model and reality this moon here on your model is above my head in Canada. You see the Canada there? When I look up, it's here, whatever degree of, not 90 degrees, it's not 90 degrees. Of course, the Earth is tilted, so 90 degrees would be kind of over here. Now, whether it's 60 or 70 degree of angle, explain to me why I'm looking sh almost, listen, pay attention, almost 90 degrees almost yeah we get it mikey we get it let's take an example to show you how this is entirely possible mikey now i think you live in saskatchewan correct me if i'm wrong so we use that as a reference point and we're going to use the 30th of november last year as our time of viewing on that night, at approximately 3.30 a.m., the moon had an altitude at that location of 62 degrees. So, pretty high in the sky. Now, if we move over to Universe Sandbox and put in the same date and time, we can see that the moon is exactly where you would expect it to be. It's not off to the side like your little model there. Which, by the way, is the reason you're so wrong here, or at least confused. Firstly, the model is not to scale, we can all agree that, and also the moon is not in a five degree orbit like it is here in reality. Also, you need to look at the positions in your little model there. If you position it correctly, I think you'll find that it is entirely possible to have the moon overhead if you're in Canada. But Mikey, I think we have conclusively shown to you that it is possible to have the moon overhead at your location using our heliocentric model. Water remains level when at rest good listening skills globies so why is the moon over here because it is on a stick move it a little bit more towards you mikey and you will see like i said earlier that it's entirely possible for the moon to be above canada with your little model there and that is of course because of the earth's tilt 
And guess what? Two weeks ago, the moon was almost in this kind of a direction. So at what point did the Earth tilt or the moon move? You explain it to me. Rude. But Mikey, it's because the Earth rotates and it does so at a quicker rate than the moon's path through our sky. The moon gets further away from the horizon and then closer to the horizon as it rises and sets because we're on a spherical body that is rotating. Good luck. Remember, this is your model. I have your model in front of me. It does not work. Even though it's grossly out of scale. And remember, the sun is rotating around us. It goes to the northwest in the summer. And because of the bigger outer circle, it appears to be setting in the southwest because it's going on a bigger circle. So if we were rotating around the sun, shouldn't the sun be making this kind of a shape in the sky? A U-shape? Yeah, it should, Mikey, you're right. I don't really know what to tell you here, matey. Remember, we're supposed to be rotating around the sun on your model, so why is the sun going this way and not that way? Because the path of the sun through our sky during the day is because of our rotation, not because of our orbit. Good luck, Globies. Say hello. <clears throat> yeah, I know you're confused too, because the Globies don't know what the frick they're talking about. Yeah, I'm talking about the moon, see? She's like, what's going on here? This doesn't work. This is hilarious. Can I play with this toy? <laughs> yeah, that's the sun. Doesn't that look funny there too? <laughs> you explain it to them. This is how stupid they are, Rakia. Oh, you want to get cats involved? Sure, we can do that. I see your cat, and I raise you my... Oh. <clears throat> they see, see. They don't understand their model. See? Yeah, no, that doesn't go there. That doesn't go there. Yeah, I don't agree with you either, Rikia. Yeah, so good luck. Yeah, even, see, she's even confused. Aren't you confused? <laughs> good luck, guys. See you later, alligator. Okay, well, not content with that video, Mikey had to upload another one with his model. Oh, cat hair everywhere. Let's see what he has to say here. Globies. This is an eclipse in your world. The, an hour or two or however long the eclipse takes, 60 minutes, 45 minutes, whatever it is, don't really care about the time and I don't care about the scale it's not to scale this is your scale well it's not your Sun looks about 20 centimeters in diameter so with that in mind the earth would only be around two millimeters across and 21 and a half centimeters away from your Sun the moon would only be half a millimeter in diameter and around five centimeters away from your Earth. So yeah, scale matters, and that is not our scale. This is not my scale, this is your scale. And it doesn't matter how far the sun is away from this flat Earth here. It doesn't matter if I put this 100 feet further this way, it does not make your model work. Well, it does, because we've got to match the model as close to reality as we can, don't we? That's what a model is, after all. I will explain it's very slowly so you guys can understand. This is an eclipse, according to you guys. Of course, once a month, according to you, the moon is in front of the sun. This is what supposedly a new moon is. In your model. Yes, but let's remember, in our model, the moon has an orbital tilt of around five degrees. So it doesn't always line up with the sun. It's still a new moon, but not necessarily an eclipse. Remember, this is the back side of the moon. This should be the dark side. Dark side. Well, it is the dark side during the new moon, but it's also the side we see during a full moon, whilst it's illuminated. It's not the back of the moon, so to speak, because that's the side of the moon that's always facing away from us. 
Okay, so this, you can explain to me how you guys have these kind of paths. The green line should be the original path. It should be even flatter and more straight than that. But I put a curve on it just because of your supposed ball. So the red and the orange line are totality paths on Google. Look it up. Why am I going from corner to corner? How does that work on your model? How does the moon go from the top left to the bottom right or from the top right to the bottom left on your model? Again, I will explain with pleasure, Mikey. This is the first image I came across. And as you can see, it is displaying two different eclipse paths. The difference should be obvious to you, Mikey. Look at the time of year that these eclipses occur. In relation to the sun, the Earth is tilted in different directions in April and October. But crucially, so is the moon's orbital plane. And you can see that this causes the different eclipse paths depending on when the eclipse occurs. Nobody is disproving me. All you're doing is uh, insulting me again. Insults do not provide proof of a globe. No insults from me, Mikey. Just the proof you're asking for, buddy. Right, morons? Because I get to say moron because I have proof. You don't. Color drawing on a piece of A4 is unfortunately not proof, Mikey. So again, how does this go from the top right, top left, to the bottom right? Or from the top right to the bottom left? of totality, okay? So again, because of Earth's tilt. You, you right there, explain this to me. Remember, I'm the stupid and dumb one, non-educated, non-indoctrinated. This is what reality, how it works in reality, okay? Good luck, Lobies. Interesting to see that Mikey gives no explanation as to how those ecliptic paths cross on a flat Earth. And remember, insulting and sitting in your offices in front of a green screen... Oh, damn it. Cut the feed. Cut the feed. Now. ...does not provide proof of this, or at least of this. Time to wake up, folks. Okay, over and out there. Tard class is over. Goodbye. Great, thanks Mikey. Well, I explained to you how it can be done, so now it's over to you. Please explain to me how these two ecliptic paths are possible on a flat Earth. I think you might have inadvertently debunked the entire flat Earth movement with this question, Mikey. I'll wait. Well, there we go, what do you think of that? Will Mikey answer my question? Let me know in the comments below. But for now, we're all done and debunked for another Flat Earth Friday. Thanks so much for watching. It is, of course, appreciated. If you enjoyed it, please do consider subscribing to the channel and, of course, hitting that thumbs up button too. I've been Simon Dan. Have yourselves a great day and I'll see you tomorrow for another Saturday session. See you then.